Hi. So the today's session, we'll be covering about the phases of cyber attack. What are the phases of cyber attack? Why I say it's phases? The attack does not happen immediately or it's not happening on a fraction of a second or end in a fraction of a second. For any type of attack or any planned attack, it is similar to the cyber, I mean, real life attacks on any person, any organization or any company or any country even. The attacks will be happening in multiple phases. The initial phase will be reconnaissance, understanding, gathering information about the target, studying more about it, understanding more about the target we about to attack. So we talk about things in detail. And so with this, basically, we try to manipulate things and we try to download some other tools, some freely available tools, which can help us to understand more on the cyber attacks. OK, the objective for today, what are we going to take away from this session? We'll be understanding the basic concepts of cyber crime and what are the types of cyber crime? the techniques and phases of cyber attack. Why do we need uh, need to have an enterprise wide security framework to ensure that everything is secure and the frameworks and any guidelines and policies which are available for us. It's only help us in defending the environment. So no other guide, no prescriptions which is freely available or which is prescribed by any other body which is completely offensive in nature. So the cybersecurity for us, 90% of the goal, 95% of the contribution from uh, every community and the every bo general body who takes care of the cybersecurity restrictions or cybersecurity enhancements, they provide defensive security guidelines alone. And only the remaining 5% of people who work on offensive security who try to go offensive on the own organization. We'll talk about the hackers and what are the different type of hackers available in it. And I'll take you to your NIST cybersecurity framework. As we see that uh, NIST is uh, available on almost all of the domains. They provide guidelines on cloud computing. They were uh, providing guidelines on the cryptography as well. So NIST is almost an integral part of any domain of cybersecurity. And we'll be talking about the cybersecurity framework, which is specifically available for defensive framework one. And uh, understanding the basic concepts around uh, incident response. So what is an incident response and what are the steps we need to take and what are the ways we can get ourselves prepared for any type of incident and how to respond to it? A cyber crime is any criminal activity which involves computing devices or anything which happening over digitally. There is even any kind of crime. If you try to start bullying someone, if you try to attack someone in the physical world, obviously the person will get hurt physically. Uh, they might be uh, bleeding or they might be injured or they might be the same thing which can also do on the cyber world. We can same bully the person. We can uh, attack the person. We can injure the person mentally. What happens when we threaten him over the emails, chat messages over uh, manipulated voice calls or we keep on hearing that there are uh, multiple leaks on various celebrities. What happens when we defame them? Obviously, it's like injuring or attacking or physically not in the physical sense it's in a cyber way the mentally we are targeting some person organization or even on countries so as a meaning what described on this uh, slide criminal activity that involves computing devices such as computers tablets phones iot's network devices or network so to be simply anything and everything happening uh, any crime which is happening over digital network what are the examples of cyber crimes a uh, cyber bullying uh, threatening someone or uh, hacking someone's account or uh, defaming someone or uh, consistently you can also see the multiple games we heard about the blue whale game or the momo games these are the games which are making the people addicted over and they threaten people to do some activities on behalf of the attacker even most of the scenarios i mean most of the kids and uh, teenagers we see that they even uh, go to an end where they even sacrifice their life what are the other things can happen? Identity theft, losing your identity or someone stealing your identity. As I uh, already gave you an example that someone applied for a bank loan on behalf of myself, wherein I received an SMS stating that your application is successfully processed. So anywhere, because even as a security professional, we need to make sure that every data uh, which is available on the Internet to be protected and uh, that has to be taken care. Of. Please also there are multiple guidelines instead of following the multiple guidelines. We just need to follow the instinct basic instinct. What our mind says what our heart actually feels about. 
sharing something on a uh, in social media or sharing something on the internet for uh, checking a person i mean it is obviously very easy for anyone can steal an identity like your residence your other cards whatever it may be anything can be taken off there are various tools multiple tools we can get from the internet which are freely available the open source intelligence a lot of tools for gathering information i believe the site is petrava okay multigo is one of the tools which are available actually for training purpose it is easy for us to go on with multigo community edition that's free and it is limited with features we cannot expect 100% features available on the paid version but anyway we go for the one before downloading it we need to register it as usual so recently uh, why we have this kind of captchas nowadays a lot of people see that the captchas are available whenever we fill in a form before we submit it this is just to ensure that the things are not happening by a robot or a bot i have not filled the name email address i just entered the password because the form was pre filled because when i get in everything was pre defined it is easy for us to set up the values of any target if it ask for a name it should give something if it ask for a last name it should give a value if it ask for your email address address telephone number date of birth everything everything that can be pre configured in a list and that can be passed on to any number of forms within a minute or i mean manually if i enter a form it would take at least 30 seconds or a minute to complete this form and log into this page complete this activity but what makes it easy when i automate it when i use a script or when i use an app application i can create hundreds of account within a minute because every time i can provide a random value so just to stop it ensure that it is not bot activity it gives these kind of captchas or uh, other mechanisms so i'm registering okay the email address already exists so then i need to log in okay let's go for multigo community edition we need to find a download link okay we have the flavor supporting multiple operating systems windows linux mac so i'm choosing windows actually i don't have java to run it because most of these open source softwares which are freely available are written for linux because we don't find much of the testing tools or offensive security tools for windows platform but even when we want to run it uh, most of the applications need java support so just to make sure if some of your tools which are downloaded by on the internet and they are not working on your platform please make sure that you are using a latest version of java installed and here we click on the download i'm downloading the exe file along with the java executable so it's around 160 mb in size okay this is an identity theft uh, where we left and cyber terrorism as like the real world everything happening over the uh, internet people spreading some activity which are related to their community or people convincing them to join digital army or any any kind of crime or any kind of terrorism activity terrorism kind not only really attacking like convincing people to do something creating and publishing the games like uh, momo games or uh, blue whales the, those are categorized under terrorism the computer viruses uh, that's more frequently available just to make sure they are damaging our system personally or anything it may be smartphone or a computer or a desktop whatever that may be what are the categories of first cyber crime the computer systems uh, where the target has a technology and other thing the technology as a weapon the tools which are available uh, for us and uh, tools which are we demonstrating these are not software simply we call them as uh, weapons weapon can be used for protection and as well as destruction so we are using these weapons for i mean the purpose how we use it the computer systems network and any kind of uh, personal or business enablers there are a lot of things even uh, there could be attack on the pacemakers there is obviously possible for a person to pass on the electromagnetic signals or electromagnetic waves or just to diffuse or just to confuse the function of a pacemaker what typically a pacemaker does it ensures that the heartbeat rhythm is normal and it is artificially managed so when manipulating the things what could cause it it can definitely hack a person's life so the each and every technology can be remotely handled or tackled or taken down or manipulated in any way 
So the uh, purpose of an application which was actually designed is make sure to be a good or to cause something good for the maker or for the general public. If you produce a software which makes good, it makes uh, delivers a better performance or it enhances some features or any way, some or other way, if your application helps others, it means a good software. If the software destructs in general, and uh, if that gives only the benefit for the developers, that means the software is malicious and it's not intended for using. So what is hacking? Hacking is not only just defacing or getting unauthorized of access of a system, taking down a system, breaking down a system. Hacking is general term, which is taking advantage of something. If you're a better craftsman, you can hack into some de existing design and you can manipulate it. You can enhance the performance. You can enhance the feature of it. It is something if you are able to modify the existence of something, it is called as hacking. When you add something, your TV speakers are not working fine. And if you're good in electronics or if you're good in acoustics or sound system, when you make something, when you attach some existing advanced audio system to your existing television, and you can simply call it as I hacked the television system. Now it's my entertainment system. It is no more a regular TV and audio system. It's an entertainment. So similarly, when you enhance or update or modify the existing performance of a particular thing, it's called hacking. But in the real world, we use the term hacking as a wrong sense. That means uh, obviously the people uh, hack me, the people will damage us, the people will destroy something. Nowhere like that. Depending on the purpose of hacking, it differs. Usually people will speak about two different hackers. One is with the white hat and other one is with the black hat. White hat people do the same hacking. Hacking in the sense they try to manipulate, they try to modify, they try to take advantage of something, the application or a hardware or infrastructure anything it may be. It is just to check how the environment or how the application or how the hardware is. And is there a possibility of making it advanced? Is it a possibility of making it work better? Or if there is any patch to make it good? These are the ways the white hat hackers could think. And also they would be helping the organization to identify the organizational weakness. They are the specialist. They use the same kind of cyber weapons just to test the environment, whether any vulnerabilities available in the network side or hardware side, or even on the configuration part, people can identify it and they can create a report. The testing phase will be so interesting. That was wonderful. We can spend time even for a couple of days, couple of weeks or month, we can test it. I mean, the part which I feel bad is the reporting part. We need to rewrite everything is in theory. I mean, including the screenshots and why was the attack so critical and how to manipulate, how to make it repeat. I mean, what are the procedures and step by step procedure to reproduce it? That's a hefty task of a white hat hacker. Typically, the black hat hacker, what they do, they do the same thing. They use the same cyber weapons. Say they use to manipulate the network. They try to penetrate the network, exfiltrate. They do everything for their personal cause. The person who has a bad intention with a good professional or technical skills. And also one more person who sits in between who can be called as a gray hat hacker. He would be neither a good person nor a bad person. Maybe for some time he works as a good. Obviously there would be a change in his behavior and we cannot trust the people whether he could be a black hat or a white hat. He would know he would be always like a neutral a cat which is standing on a wall which can jump on either side. And as for the description on this slide, white hat hacking carries out planned, approved, and ethical reasons. The one more thing is planned, approved, and ethical reason. Because when you do a pen testing, it is obviously you need to get a written approval from the consent team or consent organization. Without a consent of written agreement or email agreement, anything, whatever it may be, signed agreement, you should not carry out any testing over a network or any kind of thing. Because obviously it will uh, lead you to uh, legal uh, action or anything that can cause because uh, cyber law is not so strict or not so strict in, in, in our country. But even though the company which is not a part of an Indian company and he is from a different region and who follows a strict cyber security guidelines and cyber security law, obviously there is a possibility of getting it demanded uh, through the government. And anyway, in one day or another, because every company will not obviously sue you. But there is obviously a chance of getting penalized and face the legal consequences when we do the same testing without approval, even for a good purpose.
but the same other people they don't mind they don't need authorization they will not be ethical and their intention is personal gain or uh, typically just for happiness just for fun or just to destroy the competitor company etc so we call the black hat hackers as a uh, people who are not ethical enough who lives in a darker place who not come out and work on the dark secrets so what are the incentives of crime what is the purpose of crime and what are the motivation of it with this picture we can see that there are 1% of people who looks for the reward reward in the sense that i already said to you there are lot of communities where is available that is called bug crowd or bug bounty target there is plenty is available in there people will openly host their softwares or openly host their hardware or they want you to test the software and hardware to find bugs and when you find a bug obviously they will pay you in huge cash so the vulnerability disclosure the next generation pen testing the bug bounty the bug bounties are where we can uh, demonstrate the ethical hacking skills and uh, make it cash because usually these kind of hackers will be paid well on the organization but even as a part time you can do it the other percentage of fraction of people 51% of people doing these activities the intention of it is for the fun and thrill people even does not bother carrying the money fame or something they carry this only for thrill and fun typically what even uh, some people do that if there is any site is challenging of any site is complicated or some people even say that uh, my site is 100% protected or my company is 100% secured it is easy for someone to try his skills on the web application or the real enterprise network or the cloud network just to make sure that he he is able to breach it if he is able to break it what happens there are a lot of web pages where we can find like paste bin these are freely available paste bin some kind of uh, online notepads where people uh, steal the credentials and post it on the internet look when we search for it uh, 1.4 billion clear text credential discovered in a single database paste bin for example we can try opening any of it we are not sure how confident it is okay this is uh, seems to be looking like a script which automates some kind of attacks uh, x8 process faker uh, for example if the email address and passwords are freely posted on some place how the raw data looks like it is easy for anyone to compromise a network and uh, you can simply publish it on the internet when the credential are out it is easy for uh, any person who can uh, get into it get access into it so nowhere the digital network or digital devices are 100% secure and as we see that 51% of people working for fun and thrill alone only the 19 19% works on the money and the gains what they gain and the 29% of moral issues this is the simple chart which explains why the attacks are happening what is the intention of it and cyber attacks making news every day not only a single day every day news contents which are seeing here would be maybe from 2017 or maybe this was designed 6 uh, months or 1 year ago even uh, you people might hear the pakistani banks got hacked when you simply click on a cyber attack on a news banks in cyber attack no, number 9 cyber security access needed for better practices uk will be hit by category 1 cyber attack says the government these attacks are publicly disclosed i mean they inform that they are getting attacked i mean they will be informing that uh, you will be getting attacked so the every day the vectors and the weapons the people use are more complex and more sophisticated and that can do huge damage and uh, i can tell you an example a bank from america got hacked because uh, it got partner with a bank of bangladesh that comes under the operational risk i mean uh, business logic risk because without the due diligence the bank from america got contract with uh, bank in bangladesh for financial transaction and everything so what happening between the bank of america or the bank from america trusting the bank from bangladesh so the network between the bangladesh bank and america bank would could be secure they might be having an ipsec tunnel or a vpn tunnel or they might be having an mpls secure connection any type of network connectivity between these two banks could be secure but when a person is uh, able to infiltrate or intrude into the bank of bangladesh is it is easy for him to go to the bank which is located in america and make the transaction and within minutes and within uh, hours there were millions of transaction happening around the asian countries and uh, that was a huge breach 
So not only protecting your network, you need to make sure that who are you contacting with and who are you giving authorization with any misused credential because we see that the credentials were publicly available. What could be one of the credential may be your uh, cloud account admin account. When you give a cloud admin account of your enterprise, what happens? Obviously, there is a possibility of making it changes or getting your total enterprise down. So it is always advisable for having a multi-factor authentication for any sensitive accounts for even for a standard account. It is necessary to implement a multi-factor authentication like username password along with the token number or OTP number iris scanner, kind of fingerprint scanner, whatever is feasible for you. Cyber attack. Uh, what are the categories of cyber attack? What are the types of cyber attack compromising of a computer or a network device that is more common and more frequent and the beauty of it 99% of breaches or compromised are not even getting detected. That's how the security of any environment works on. I was supporting for us uh, enterprise customers once wherein uh, I handled uh, threats risk. I mean, I especially work on not work on much on configurations and uh, installation part. I work on the threat and uh, I love to play with it. Whenever I see a compromisation in the network or anything, when I talk to the people or when I talk to the senior team, they even not sure that there was a breach that there was an existing uh, misconfiguration or uh, existing tamper of the network protection is already done. It is obviously it is a human tendency to forget things or uh, laziness or irresponsibility or not following the proper procedures or proper checklist step by step. When you do something, you need to have a particular list. What are the things the planning? Even I seen that on uh, large enterprises, not only a, a company scaled of 100 to 200 Miller in my experience as a support uh, for customers. I handle at least a thousand to thousand five hundred incidents to be minimum in three years of span. Most of the targets, uh, most of the infections, most of the damages not caused by the advanced malware. These were regular infection, regular malware, which spread across, which was not controlled, which was not proactively defended, which was not configured even. How can we detect malware in advance? In mean proactively. Proactively, uh, there are multiple ways why the malware, uh, I mean the antivirus softwares are not detecting your malware is you are excluding some particular folders. There is always a thumb of rule. The AV softwares will always exclude the applications, the folders or devices, whatever you exclude it. It means that you are letting know the antivirus software that it is a trusted application. So you, you should not do anything to it. It may be good for some occasions. What if you are a developer? You have a you are a software firm. You are developing some software which uh, uses network tracking or network tracing or if it needs some other advanced features with which looks similar to a malware, but antivirus could easily block it or delete it, quarantine it, whatever it can damage your project. So uh, on those occasions, you can uh, exclude a particular folder or not the complete subfolders or subtrees or giving access exclusion to your root folder. That would be a huge mistake. And these are the ways uh, people are getting there when we found why these malwares are not infected. I mean, not protecting the antivirus are not catching the malwares. Yeah, typically when you uh, give an exclusion to the user folders or when you give exclusion to the C drive, anything and everything runs from it or anything downloaded to the folder will be trusted and uh, antivirus will not take any action on the exclusions. Ransomware can be come through any way. There is one way method of distributing is phishing, malvertising, or sometimes even defacing or making a honeypot. Watering hole is a concept wherein, for example, if a LinkedIn page phishing not only may be in a happening on an email, it may be through an SMS, it may be through misdirected URLs, you might be wrongly routed to something, DNS poisoning. There are many ways just to distribute the package to your computer, it's easy. We don't trust as a hacker or an attacker. I will not trust rely on a single method of distribution. I'll use multiple uh, sources and multiple vectors to get into you. So the exclusions should be properly taken care of and uh, even the network when you exclude a particular subnet or particular type of devices, particular uh, complete entire intranet. Obviously any traffic between your computers inside the network will not be monitored or that will not be tracked. Even if you if has a good exception, what would the IDS or what would the IPS would do? Usually the intrusion detection system and intrusion prevention system, those devices are not cheaper devices. 
those would be more costlier and having a high budgeted devices on it and misconfiguring it obviously lead for i mean misconfiguring it or not configuring bad it's just like there is no device in between or no protection in between to be simpler so again disruption of service disruption of service uh, we can take down one of your dns server or deface your general login page when you take down your login page people will obviously not able to log in they will not be able to work from home or connect to your corporate and work remotely so that could be some of the disruption in the service data theft we seen uh, multiple times any data whatever it may be your personal data your customer data your company data even a company can decide the data is not not worth and it is useless but that could give so much information to a hacker or so much information to the competitor so the classification of data is so much important so that's why we can categorize it uh, that's how we can protect it even if the data is not required it's not valid and it is no longer important to you proper disposal of data is important if it's a printed material you always use a shredder and just chunk the papers out where no one can arrange it back and read it and even if you want to erase it there are multiple ways to securely erase the data from your computer simply deleting it and if it goes to the recycle bin or getting it back from the recycle bin even a kid from uh, first standard or second standard could do but even for deleting some file from a computer and recovering it or using a data recovery software there are multiple to be easy everything is available online and most of uh, most of the tools are freely available so there are when you call for a data recovery or when you check for a data recovery you get multiple softwares wherein you can run on a particular sector of your hard drive and collect recover the data which was accidentally deleted or intentionally deleted it is nowhere safe so injection injections are more common more frequent when you take as a web application obviously they are injecting the sql string query strings or injecting a additional script code on the regular program the cross site scripting or cross site forgery attacks both are similar to the injection type they are just injecting unwanted or a malicious code in your existing working regular program but in a regular windows based application which is already installed there are people have technologies or techniques to inject in rogue dlls rogue exes or rogue osx files any supporting file that can be injected on a normal exe file which can perform malicious task it is not recommended to have more than one or two softwares because we don't want to reduce the performance combination of two antivirus is not good but if you have antivirus installed and if you have a anti malware component i mean if you have a intrusion prevention system or any other technology of protection is installed that needs to be installed that can be done but having a two different antivirus what will be happening is for any type of file accessed or any type which is in memory two applications will be scanning the same thing there is a possibility of getting conflict between these two applications that might reduce it and uh, my suggestion would be not having softwares for the same purpose if your antivirus a1 takes care of only about the antivirus you can take care of it or you can install it if the antivirus 2 specifically designed and it works only with the spyware and adware and it will not interfere with uh, any of the antivirus 1's activity you can obviously have it and uh, advanced persistent threat are not so common to the civilians or small to medium scale enterprises these apts are so advanced and these are developed by highly trained professionals and it will be mostly a state sponsored or a country to country attack or a country to large organization attack so on those occasions the apts will be come into place but you will not find it on your computer and even if it's on a computer it, we will not know that whether it resides as a malware or not it will not work until it gets i mean most people might seen a movie like holiday or tamil movie some tupaki etc uh, where people call as a sleeper cell right these apts will behave exactly same to the same sleeper cell it will be in your computer it will be on a network device it will be on multiple parts uh, fragmented across multiple devices until you receive a command it will not function even for years or months it will be stay inactive compromise of a device what are we going to get from compromising a device we will be getting the full control over it and we can do anything if i have a full control over a computer device i can restrict access for other users or i can do additional task which are not intended for me i mean which are not i am designated into uh when you have got uh, i mean for example when you have a uh, root access admin access power user credentials anything you can do that 
for elevation of privilege elevation of privilege is nothing but uh, from a standard user or a normal user you are getting yourself as a super user or a power user i mean uh, your privilege of the user account is getting increased so what happens the outcome once the control is achieved achieved gives a huge power to the hacker to carry on multitude of attacks so when you gain an administrator account you can use the account to take over other systems on the network as well so getting compromising compromising a single device will lead you total network down as a security saying there would be always people say that you are as strong as your weakest link every link has to be strong enough just to hold so if any of one any one of the link is weak obviously the chain will get broken it is always mandatory to treat each and every device and every ch- node or every host connected as a weakest chain and we need to ma- treat them as a weakest chain and to protect them as much as possible as we can so the disruption in the service what we can have disruption in the service we normally uh, the service will not function properly or there is a poor performance in the service so what are the outcomes system failure system downtime revenue loss reputation loss uh, reputation loss yeah for example when the third party uh, tries to log in to access uh, i'm using uh, office 365 as an email for example if i'm not able to log into the email online and i'm not able to send or receive emails or even uh, if i log into gmail or not that could be a reputation loss the fitness tracking app that was also known that when a gps enabled tracking device which gave the exact map of what are the infrastructure mostly uh, the google maps or any other mapping network that will be highly censored and you can only see the civilian uh, information on google maps or any map which is freely available even uh, nasa have published a map but the maps are censored any military or any confidential uh, information will not be available but these kind of fitness apps uh, which are connected to a gps enabled fitness device obviously a person can track how long or uh, what is his physical physical activity and what are the areas he moves just to make sure calculating the right amount of information but that was stolen and it was helped the bad guys to track exactly where he goes and uh, what is his office locations if a person uh, typically from 9 to 5 monday to friday he is being in a particular location what it is easy for us to guess 9 to 5 on a particular location from monday to friday every day every day every week he goes obviously that might be his work location so tracking his gps location and uh, tracing out where exactly it goes where are the areas he rounds with it we can give a visual map of it okay this is one of the tool which i was uh, informing you that multigo which has multiple editions we are using the multigo community edition which is free but just to run it we need to have account registered and it will not have complete features i should be receiving password in my email so i can check what was the offer at the time if i want to pursue a course on blockchain on december jan 2017 it was around 399 dollars okay i can compare it what is the exact growth it is if it's uh, costing 300 dollars why it was cost 99 dollars extra at the time or if it costing 500 dollars why it was costing 100 dollars extra at this time so for a gauging performance uh, financial status or what is the market value of a stock at the time we can compare how what is the growth and who was the what are the changes what are the major plans which uh, made the company to grow or company to distract so we can use one of this way back tool these are types of reconnaissance so objectives of an atp what it is it's a long term reconnaissance it will stay in your computer it will stay stealthy and not an antivirus or high end appliance can detect it because it will not function when the atp is split across a component 1 is residing on computer 1 and component 2 is residing on computer 2 for example if i scan only the component 1 i would not find anything from it the component 2 i individually scan the component it would not work on it the ability to act on targets quickly after establishment so once everything is done when the action is triggered it is like a software i mean regular software application which also get the patches or uh, upgrades available have you heard about the malware which are getting upgrades available like windows update so whenever they find even in the inside the network they'll be testing it how it works when when one of the component is not functioning obviously it will replace it it will get itself downloaded or any of the new modules or improved code or improved functionalities available it will be automatically replaced so when it's in the network it's a, it can be self destructive there is no need for anyone to go if i need to delete it i can get it deleted 
permanently and also securely even people cannot recover there is a news that virus total i mean virus total is a important web page a um, web application where it gathers a uh, open source intelligence on the malware virus total is owned by uh, owned i cannot say it is a subsidiary of google you can uh, search if you find any search to be to be malicious you can scan the url if you get something get some email from any malware with ai function artificial intelligence what will do on a residual file it will not go on a scan each and every file when the components are inactive it will not go to the level where it reads the code in it the ai component advanced machine learning deep intelligence these are all uh, marketing terms which are not actually work on the real and life environment any antivirus company will say that uh, they are sophisticated they work on it but typically on the real world it has to work and for the av to work properly we need to configure it for configuration we need to understand the environment what are the attack types i mean actively we can attack or passively we can attack so what we actively do we can uh, actively we do the intrusion intrusion is just penetrating or getting into your into your network or into your computer make disruption to the service or your computer environment or making it crash that's actively you can do it some examples for it the denial of service high utilization of resources system resources to perform it uh, make it perform poor uh, spoofing uh, spoofing is something like if i got hacked into your computer i can send emails from your email address uh, most people have the tendency of uh, remembering the password on browser if i get into your computer i can access multiple accounts when i open a browser it will always show the pre filled auto fill username passwords so i get into any of your account or even if i don't i can create some account like yourself and pretend that i am messaging to someone on your behalf the passive attacks can be like sniffing password uh, sniffing network traffic sniffing there will not be actively will not be making the participation but uh, will be capturing i mean capturing the packets or monitoring the traffic or monitoring what activity is happening in the network it is simply like the information gathering uh, reconnaissance phase etc this is spoofing attacker alters his identity or pretends to be someone else to the victim of the trust on behalf if i talk to your friend as yourself obviously he he will trust and what if i have a similar email address or creating a similar facebook id or similar instagram id getting knowing some things about you for knowing a person is so easy because when you work on a company uh, gathering information step by step say simple phone calls will do call to the reception and check whether you are working there or not if you are working which team you are there just multiple calls or google searches or linkedins the open source intelligence like multigos uh, there is tools like scrappy which will gather information about a particular person or particular entity the spoofing spoofing may be ip spoofing email spoofing web spoofing spoofing is manipulating or just uh, making a false identity fortunately we have a picture which explains what is a spoofing spoofing is also a kind of a man in the middle attack the person in the left the spoof ip is 102254 2530 actually what the attacker's real ip is 102550 this is the ip address of the attacker and uh, he impersonates he uh, makes a spoof ip of the same person and uh, he sends a wrong message or he forwards a wrong packet or he targets something in the network base even a simple arp request or ping request which can be created on behalf of this spoof id when i broadcast uh, some uh, unique packet obviously a tcp packet will have a three way handshake and uh, when i initiate the transaction obviously a return will be sent to the target ip so if i manipulate this ip with uh, 10 20 25 and 30 and send it across not only a single victim ip and multiple uh, ips what happens the reply will come back to the spoofed ip and making it as a das attack i mean for a single reply a broadcasted by a different person the reply will be sent to the spoofed person so thousands of replies or hundreds of reply comes to the person on a single point of time there will be a single disruption in the network that can be also done with the ip spoofing method or you can impersonate that you are using this message these sometimes the internet relay chats will use the ip address to reply back similar to the smurf attack of the ddos okay similarly the destination after the hacker sensor hackers real ip and what he sends is he sends from ip from 10.25.50 
to the IP address. Similarly, just manipulating his IP address or email address, he clones or he modifies his existence. I mean, existing identification. Hacker impersonates or alters his own IP address to the spoofed IP address. The spoofed IP address is 10.20.25.50. The original IP address is 10.20.25.30. The hacker sends message to a receiving machine masquerading as spoofed machine. The receiver interprets the message as if it is has been sent by the spoofed machine. So the real identity will not be uh, visible, but the recipient will think that the person sits in the middle sent the attack actually. I mean, sent the message actually. The receiver replies back on the spoofed message Thus, the hacker does not actually receive message from that machine because in turn, every computer will reply to the sender alone, not from the spoofed one. It is uh, the computers or the network devices not so intelligent enough to identify the spoofs. So email spoofing is simply creating an email account or email impersonation. Uh, there are multiple web email uh, security appliances which can identify the email impersonation. For example, what is it? CEO.RKM.organization.yahoo.com. The actual email address is .ceo.rkm.organization.com. But instead of it, what it does is CEO.RKM at organization.yahoo.com. A hacker creates a wrong ID. But when typically a person receives an email from it, most of the time the email address will be hidden and the first name and the last name of the email will be visible to the recipient. What happens when he got a CEO.RK email created and he creates the first name as the CEO and last name as the RKM? Obviously, the email will be displayed as CEO RKM sentiment. And uh, if the person is good enough, uh, the hacker is good enough, he can uh, try creating the signature resembling the original one and the email body and it's the same font style and how exactly the typical person sent, original person sends it. If he can replicate the same on his scenario, obviously, it is easy for someone to trick other people with kind of email spoofing with that. Web spoofing, when a person buys google.com instead of Google, he buys Googly or Gogol. And in this example, for funfair.com is the original one. These are the probabilities. Funfair, funfair. These are the probabilities the people will obviously type wrong. I mean, spelling mistake is uh, making spelling mistake is a repeated human error. No one is perfect in typing. So obviously, there's a possibility of uh, making it redirect to a different web page. And this web page can be look similar to Funfair. Even what will happen when a person types in a URL, uh, when he visits a web page, he will be curious in watching the content. What is visible? When I go virus total, I will be curious only on the content. I will not be noticing what exactly on the URL or what I type. When I type something, instead of Funfair, I typed it Funfair. I came to the same page resembling to the original one. I will not think bad about it. I will keep on browsing in it. If it gave some download, I'll start downloading it. If I uh, want to make some transaction, financial transaction, obviously it's done. So the URL web spoofing is more common. These are all the, also one of the method where we can deliver the malware into your computer. Watering hole is also a method wherein uh, a particular set of employees, we track multiple employees of an organization. What are the regular pattern? Are they using uh, Facebook frequently? Are they using a particular Facebook page frequently? Are they using a web page or web blog? What are the regular web, not only web oriented, any particular traffic? In real world scenarios also, we can manipulate it. That is actively we can social engineer. We can try to talk to him, we work with him, we sit with him, work with him, just to gather the information, whatever we can do. There is no limitation for any kind of attack. Every day the attack is expanding, the magnitude of attack is expanding. This is not how the techniques or tactics, the tools and weapons we used 10 years back. While there was an introduction in the hacking, I mean, people started using additional tips and tricks to manipulate things just for fun and practice. Yes, virus total will help you determining the false positive. You can uh, get the hash or the location from where you download the file or hash value URL. You can uh, search with it. That will give you the complete. So we try with the hash. When you search on hash, it not only searches with the single antivirus uh, appliance, it scans with multiple AVs online. You have the major security vendors. When you search it, search the hash file, Avast, Fortinite, Malwarebytes, McAfee, Zone Alarm. These are the AVs which detected it, detected the actual malware. But others say still it's a trusted one. 
we can go inside and uh, dig deeper enough what is the actual uh, p information in which language it was written what are the components associated with it what are the dlls associated with it we can also check the relation between the other similar malware in it so this is the registry key which was used in this so when you see on this every antivirus solution will have a particular naming convention pup pua potentially unwanted application potentially unwanted program or the abbreviation of it adverse some call it as an adverb win32 version just win32 version win32 adverb these are the bundle these are the families of the malware which can be identified if you want to know more about sentinel 1 how this was classified sentinel 1 was the random type nana and horus does not give me anything about it so the popular malware but should be giving a blog on it malware white has it so it tells you what is a basic about what type of infection is about Symantec has a huge virus database. So each and every type of malware will have a detailed description of how it functions and uh, when was the last detection, when was the antivirus release date, and manual removal method also will be provided. Analyzing the logs will not give you the hash values. Sometimes hashes may be obtained. It depends on what kind of log you analyze. Most of the time, we'll be knowing what kind of file it is. Actually, uh, we'll start searching with the file name. for example i got v4nx.ini this is the file i was able to identify it we need to search where this exactly located into where it was related into for example if i usual temp places if i am on the temp if i see something strange with the names or strange folders i usually get into it just to see what inside it and uh, it is always a best practice to go with the tree view kind not directly by double clicking the folders sometimes or even it's a better idea to have the file extension added along because sometimes the exe files will clone the icon and it will look like a folder when you double click it automatically it starts so always have file extension enabled so that you ensure that what kind of extension you are working on is it exactly a folder or it's a file type some files even doesn't have a file extension so this will be modified on the time when you find suspiciously when there is no file size file type design it is hard for you to determine to which application it relates to but these are the files are common when you download the malware get downloaded this will encoded characters cannot be read by humans so yeah. even when you open some file it will be jumbled or gibberish we cannot read it but the actual malware can translate it back and it can modify the file to a different executable or different readable whatever machine can read things but we are not smart enough to read as all the things machine reads it is like tracing one thing tracing a name with the name we get some location of it with the location we go to identify in why this hash is actually available we can try always use uh, opening these kind of uh, inf files tmp files on a notepad or a word processor my preferred word processor would be notepad plus plus or some my colleagues use uh, sublime text so malwarebytes gives uh, information on it Sementa gives information on it. You can even browse through it. There are plenty of sites where we can make leverage of. There are community-wise web pages, applications which can be used for us. Task attack. We frequently see that just swapping the service or reducing the performance of something is called as a task denial of service. Session hijacking. Session hijacking can be done by manipulating the cookies or session. What is a session? for every transaction the tcp or http or even a single application installed on the computer will maintain a session which is associated to a user so what happens this is some cookie editor for example i'm running it on edureco.com these are the values of cookie available here so this cookie be related to this web page will have multiple information about me and when i get this thing for example if this is my have value for joining so by manipulating the values i can definitely modify things for value of a login session is ga1 dot this is the one when i manipulate it with something else 5047 instead of 4750 i'll manipulate i'll update and reload the virus total is not working as per the cookie edition because the every time when i refresh the real value of the cookie is getting changed but some sites would not for example this is how the session id would look like alpha numeric jsu sometimes it say session token or some token when i get this i can definitely modify it and open it on a different browser this is the cookie editor i got it i'll copy the home page here they ask me for a sign in username and password let me add up a cookie here copy the information to i session 
Let's go on session. So we made a session. A simultaneous session is not valid. Usually we can capture the cookie if session from any of the cookies available and we can clone it as per the browsers, whatever browser we can on live. This is how the session will be hijacked. Usually the session ID will be transmitted. When you enter a password in your network, in your corporate environment, when you type in your username and your passwords, it will not be sent to the network as a plain text or a cipher text. Only the hash value of the password will be sent across. When the password of the hash value is sent across, we can have multiple decryptors or deciphering text. When we enter the hash value, we can get the similar original text. And with it, we can uh, directly bypass the authentication mechanism of any Windows environment. Buffer overflow is uh, one of the technique which is uh, frequently we can see it on the Windows executables, not only Windows executables, Mac or Linux. What is a buffer? Buffer is a stack or a piece of chunk of memory which is allotted for a particular program. If you have a one gigabyte of RAM or two gigabyte of RAM, and if you run a multiple application, for example, I'm using a web browser Firefox here. Firefox uses a particular memory location on the physical RAM or even if it's a page file storage, any storage with system uses it. And uh, what happens if some application tricks the memory and uh, if it rewrites or changes the memory location or alters it, if a fixed location is given. So this is the room for your complete memory location and the red portion here, we use the green. This is the actual location of Mozilla Firefox, which is utilizing and the remaining portion is empty. So you cannot access it more. When a particular memory is processed, this is the allotted memory space. Whenever a data is processed, it will be recycling the data. This is not a residual data. It is data on live, which will be periodically changed and actively monitored. So every chunk will have a separate memory address, separate memory address. This is for a process to be functioning. Every single function we have a separate. These are called a buffers on a memory. Complete memory stack, you'll be having buffer one, buffer two. We'll be flooding the memory with additional unwanted information. So the green area, which are reserved for other application and cannot be used, only the blue, which is available for Mozilla Firefox, and the black is unusable memory. And this is the available stack, which is happening. But what I do, I'll start populating it with other the red memory objects. So when I replace it, when I overwrite it, when I make flood it, I'll make confusion in the memory system just by using the regular memory addressing. I'll be manipulating it. I'll be flooding additional information to the existing buffer location that makes the application to malfunction or to crash. So the similar scenario can be used for crashing the application. If you are able to uh, read the memory live and if you are able to identify the memory location where the application resides, you can replace the particular function of Mozilla Firefox with your custom code and you can make it executed via particular application. Not only Firefox, not only the, as I said to you before, there are uh, network services could be running on Windows network devices. When we have access to it, those applications will be already running with a higher privilege. When we have direct access to it on the memory, direct memory access will be restricted in most of the scenarios but even with minimum knowledge or minimum leverageable tools, we can inject a code in memory or make it buffer. We can fill the memory stack with unwanted information just to make crash or to manipulate the actual functionality. Cyber attack lifecycle, or we can also call it as a cyber kill chain. This is called a cyber kill chain. What are the phases of attack and how we do the attack? This is also a described and a prescribed by NIST and the code for it SP 800-150. These are the levels. There are seven stages of attack lifecycle. So each and every phase is very much important. The first phase would be reconnaissance. Uh, reconnaissance is understanding, gathering information, collecting information and analyzing it, identifying it, who are you and what is the target is all about. What is the weakness or what is the infrastructure, researching on it, the researching and development and everything happening on the reconnaissance phase is to identify each and every single pinpoint information to make use of it. And the second thing is weaponizing. Weaponizing is a phase we'll be particularly crafting a payload. So every targeted attack will have a specific environment in mind. So the attacker will not uh, deploy a Mac-based malware to your Windows of infrastructure or Windows-based infra malware to your Mac-based infrastructure. That will not be obviously useless. If I want to target your mainframe computer, my payload will be different. If I want to target your Linux computers, that payload will be different. After understanding or detailedly gathering information about your network, 
if the maltigo comes in it would be easy for me to show i can show you like a tree like view for example if this is the computer organization the maltigo can give you information about each and every folder this is the category for example if ref logs would be a finance department and under program files might be a it department under it subdivisions you can correlate it with the regular file structure in my windows explorer to a gpo or domain structure how it configured and what are the operating systems in it so when i fingerprint the network came to know that what operating system and what an ip address what are the subnets involved in what are the ports open involved in everything after a gathering i create a customized payload just for your environment and after crafting it i'll get it ready the third phase is the delivery phase the delivery phase could be phishing emails drive by downloads or malvertising or internal redirects or if i'm able to possibly poison your dns it will be routed to your wrong track i mean wrong website to download the payload or as we seen that web session spoofing multiple vectors can be done or uh, we seen in the stuxnet scenario i'll copy the malware and throw it outside your company premise any of your employee could pick up the pen drive and get it connected on your computer which is inside your network so anyway the malware delivered to it after delivery the exploitation phase start the exploitation phase actually execute after the what the payload is designed is delivered to it it starts executing and the phase 5 is collecting the additional information or gathering additional information from the cnc c2 servers or installing it or making it remotely accessible what exactly installs it may be installing a backdoor it may be a remote access trojan or it may be settling up just to give with the elevator privilege it might be residing in a computer without any action it might be in rest so the six command and control center will give the instruction on what to do what are the things to be uh, performed because any malware and every malware is uh, designed the most advanced malwares will obviously need a command and control center they will not act on its own when they have no connectivity with the cnc center the purpose would be simply idle or if they did not work for a particular month or particular time frame just like the expiry date if there is an expiry date if they are not able to reach the command center after installation for more than 30 days or 40 days they will self destruct itself and they will delete itself from the and the phase 7 once the things are done when the cnc receives the command and uh, it gets additional packages and installs itself on the network it is ready now the attacker is good to go and uh, he can do anything whatever he wish to on the network on the compromised environment these are the seven steps layer by layer approach initially from gathering information or identifying or understanding the target we will be customizing especially craft a malware which is specific for the environment third we deliver it and after delivering it the exploit starts and it installs a remote accessible pieces of software that ensures stubborn persistence on the target environment and command and control center on the phase 6 hacker uses the install bug to launch a remote cnc channel with the compromised device so the communication securely happens seven act on the objectives so this is the place where the actual user hackers interference or hackers motive will be achieved this is the cyber kill chain matrix what we uh, seen previous slide which was uh, almost the same with explanation but it shows how it goes so what are the things we can do proactive control protection and detection that has to be in the phase within a reconnaissance weaponize and delivery phase the protection and detection mechanism has to be in place but when it passes to the stage 5 installation command and center objectives what we do that will be reactive the two types of response we provide proactive response and our reactive response and reactive controls are incident response and recovery on uh, when it crosses the exploitation phase and after it gets installed on the local mice recognition weaponize deliver exploit install say, communicate to the cnc attack on the object phase 1 what are recognition phases effort of an attacker towards gathering maximum information in the target in the network information architecture information operating system and other specific information on it the data can be gathered from public source or dumpster diving or google search social engineering any means any whatever the means it may be the attacker will gather information about your organization so this is the phase where uh, he'll be identifying who are the active users who are the directors or who are the it administrators and what kind of credentials are used what are the things can be used whose account can be compromised easily for the first time so it might be helpful to breach others account as well so the objective what are the types active intrusion they perform the penetration testing and they use the cyber weapons to test in the attack 
so passive is already getting gathering or paying amount or paying some amount and getting information about your company actively if i am not participating on collection of your data that is uh, passive i can use some other source to gather information about you so what are the tools available apart from the physical human intelligence a variety of freely available resources are used for gathering and correlating information on it what are the things google tracks shodan zoom i census dark web marketplaces for gathering leaked details of servers and users information so there are marketplaces available where you can purchase the leaked information of user credentials sometimes even hackers can post it on a paste bin where you can use the credentials to try access it it is most common when hacker steals the netflix the amazon prime account these accounts are easily hacked and these credentials are easily available across and a single account was shared between multiple users that's happening we cannot control them but still it happens so what are the ways we can mitigate on the reconnaissance phase there should be a proper detection and prevention control in each and every layer the system hardening and vulnerability management and patching and configuration manager are the key objective i mean key controls available when you harden the image harden the operating system when all the vulnerabilities are patched there is no vulnerable no existing one and the softwares and the network devices the applications and everything is configured properly configured properly means the right configuration suits for your enterprise or environment and also the policy streamlining in the first phase we can use the deception technology deceptions are nothing but it is like a regular computer a regular device which will be imitating or mimicking the actions where in user bots or user rules which they try to penetrate inside the network will think this is also one kind of a tool it's like a toy or robo or someone in disguise to compare to a real life scenario someone in disguising as a clown or someone disguising as a house owner you might be come across with multiple examples it is something like the same attacks will be also happening on the honey pot the honey pot will not get damaged because uh, the main purpose is to get attacked and get compromised and get breached and uh, these uh, attacks compromisation will be blocked and these are a primary source these are the initial vectors the honey pots will be kept on the initial layers where the detection will happen the intrusion will happen so when there is any alert or any uh, tamper in the settings or configuration with the notification we can also go for a next level of protection once the alert is already triggered it's obviously of us to jump into the action the phase 2 what we discussed on this is the weaponization phase hacker goal is to create bot or a trojan or a malware whichever suits your infrastructure specially crafted if you don't have a email server hosted on your premise i will not include a component which attacks the exin server or a domino server or i won't have a additional module which needs to be included in the existing payload i just target a window based operating system and a windows based servers that's enough if i see your endpoint computers are worthless i just need to target your server web server would be obviously hosted or publicly hosted or internally hosted or intranet i need to take down i need to specifically write on the include a package which is on the web server servers may be running typically they use iis or apache servers the most commonly if you use a different kind of web server i use a specific payload which can uh, take down your web server the only thing i need this phase i'll be understanding i mean i'll be making a package customly i'll wrap it up with the gift package and get it ready so what are the tools i can use it for i can use metasploit whale framework lucky strike these are the frameworks which are available for us to customize or customizely create package in matter of just few clicks or one or two lines of commands these are already done there are in india in globally we find more script kiddies script kiddies are the people who really want to become a hacker and does not possess a programming knowledge or inability to write code but they are some of smart they get the tools downloaded from internet they go through blogs or go through the dark net to read some articles on how to create they use the predefined or pre customized uh, scripts which are available even in this session we when we searched on paste bin we found multiple uh, exploits written in multiple languages so that can be used on the existing framework and we can customize it and deploy it as per the need so the delivery phase what is it the delivery phase after making the package for you it's a uh, gift wrapping up sending your name whatever it may be this is the objective is to deliver the actual weapon inside your environment we can use any type of tool like social engineering we can distribute the malware containing usb drives malware types and anything so what we can do for mitigation 
mitigation you can use ids ips firewall and if i'm targeting on a web application server i can install a web application firewall and also there is a strict uh, security training to be given to the employees employees is the very first source and very first misconfiguration we can call error we can call because we humans always tend to do mistakes how many times we do accidentally or repeatedly wantedly unknowingly we'll do something which are not to be meant which are not to be done on the enterprise which can take down the server for some time even a single reboot everyone know that we should not reboot a computer when during the production hours but accidentally if someone instead of log off he clicked on the shutdown instead of log off he clicked on a restart there is a server will take at least 5 10 minutes to get a proper boot up during the time it will be also like a denial of service attack but due to a human error so proper training of about the security and how should we respond to the every cyber incident when we receive an email from a strange person what are the things we need to look into it what are the best practices we need to if every computer is provided with antivirus or some solutions if they keep on popping up with notifications stating there is a virus or a malware or the antivirus is out of date we need to educate the user to reach out to the help desk or the service desk so that it will be notified to the right people and we can get into the work and get to fix it so the training and awareness program is important for any employee from any level so any human it's a tendency of a human to make mistakes exploitation phase the phase 4 the this is the days after delivering the package the package gets into the environment the exploitation of payload actually gets into it and already known vulnerabilities are getting exploited during this phase so what are the type of attack i can do i can do malware dropper malware dropper or nothing but a small component which does not have any malicious functionality and other than downloading something from internet i write a single line of code once it's executed or once a similar action or similar event i mean logic bombs multiple we can create a single line of code download a particular file from it and run this can be written on a single batch file i don't need to be a good programmer to write a batch script or a powershell script to download a file and execute that can be done it is a human tendency to download any file can be run so the malware dropper will just download it and install the other software from your remote code execution that's also remotely from your computer you can exploit can take control you can run you can execute commands on a remote machine buffer overflow we already seen that integer overflow buffer overflow system crash memory leak these are more common mitigation control what can we do we can uh, implement the process monitoring host intrusion detection system anti malware system hardening again we come back to the security awareness installation after the successful installation if it's already customized malware which is ready for environment is done or in case if it's a malware downloader it downloads and gets it installed on the computer it makes sure that whenever a user deletes or antivirus deletes malware it tries to recover or if some portion of the malware is deleted it again downloads it. if some portion of malware is missing it somehow wants to retain its persistence in the network host intrusion detection system are typically software based when it placed on a network intrusion detection system is just like a device which is on a pass through device not like a firewall what firewall does it monitors every traffic it based on the rules every traffic it lets in or blocks in intrusion detection system it lets every traffic inside and it makes a tracks of it so when something is malicious and when something is similar to a malware behavior or suspicious behavior it creates an alert that is the only difference if it's an intrusion prevention system instead of alert it will block so that is the difference between ips and ids so when the same kind of detection system is installed in a host that is a application that comes along with the antivirus for example so this is one of the antivirus which is a enterprise edition which is available you can see that network and host exploits mitigation is one of the component what actually it does is it monitors the incoming and outgoing traffic and it also has a intrusion prevention system built in so this component is called hips host based intrusion prevention so when it's on a network level it is network based intrusion prevention so there are multiple components uh, antivirus and spyware proactive threat protection will have additional components like sonar and application device control etc so when it's software it's a software host based intrusion prevention so what are the mitigation the network security control endpoint security control server hardening the server monitoring user behavior analysis the user behavior analysis is an important task in getting stuff i mean we cannot always expect the attack happening from the outside if it's a bad employee acting inside a company or what if a hacker want to hack into your company 
but if it's unsuccessful outside it is so easy for anyone to get a low cost job when you have a potential to earn lakhs in money when you clear up an interview and if you are a fresher obviously if a company wants to just pay you 10 15000 obviously the company would be happy uh, identifying a best person uh, the hrs even uh, will be happy i got a best resource for the low cost so what happens when he comes in real intention is not to earn the 10000 or 15000 what the company gives him just to get into the infrastructure and physically that is a intruder i mean a insider when a person uh, acts inside and he uh, acts against your company not only a hacker needs to be done when an unsatisfied employee i mean with the poor appraisals or poor high poor growth anything it may be uh, whatever the human tendency whatever uh, things makes a human behave abnormal or go beyond the uh, ethical way use of behavior analytics swift incident response is very important in any such attempt swift is nothing but how fast we can react how efficient we can react when a incident is notified when the incident in alert related to incident was triggered what are the measures we are, have in hand what are the plan we already have in hand what is the initial step we need to do and uh, what are the precautionary measures we'll be taking in to slow down the attack because it is impossible to immediately stop the attack it is obviously possible to slow down the attack when a malware breaches the computer in a minute it reaches 100 computers we can reduce it to breach 50 computers a minute but it cannot be stopped on a single time so slowing down the computer and if particular network segment is getting infected we can uh, take the network down i mean particular segment down and specifically we can control them what happens or investigation team incident response team what they do there are multiple specialist available the antivirus specialist the sm specialist the alert management specialist or data recovery specialist or even the forensic specialist are available on site how organized they are and how they react and how fast they react and respond to the particular incident that's called swift incident response the command and control center after the installation of backdoors or the malware is previously staged this is the place where it uh, communicates to the cnc center we go through the objective it establishes a connection between the internal host and the external command and control center many times the cnc communication takes place in a small unnoticeable chunk hence the communication is not made often the frequency of the communication between the existing malware and the cnc center will not be much frequent will be like a smaller package because for a human we need a message to be said mitigate the risk the actual location is there but for a machine it is easy we can uh, program a code if we receive a number 1 start the attack if you receive the number 2 wait for the response if you receive the command number 3 self destruct so the size of the message received by the n malware or sent by the user, that will be a small chunk that will go unnoticed for complex atp the cnc servers are moved frequently from one ip or another ip this is not only happening for uh, complex atps the even the ransomware are having uh, multiple servers every day the servers are getting routed or keeps on moving but these apts will be able to identify the next ip address i mean next url because these ip addresses are web urls are generated using a hashing algorithm so obviously the malware will know what would be the next ip address so everything is pre programmed or logically it will make the decision on it the mitigation advanced network security control the correlation between endpoint security controls use of behavior again again goes to the same swift responds in any such attempt the plan of action is everything is after getting into it the finally the attacker will take carries out his work and the mitigation on this stage is often too late because everything is set and everything is ready for the attacker to proceed the thing the swift response and recovery is the key and also it is essential to detect the bug or malware which is communicating to the cnc center thing which we need to find it in the phase 5 phase 6 we left phase 7 it's too late so obviously we need to plan for some other disaster recovery or backup that is the plan of action on the 7 the phase 7 it's obviously we say that it's too late it's almost over the same thing in a different diagram reconnaissance weaponization delivery exploitation installation cnc and action so what is a layered approach how depth we can uh, get in so the defense is not a single tier architecture it's a multi tier architecture every layer we implement security so the core is the data so for protecting the data what are we doing is data backup local or offsite and also the plans for disaster recovery business continuity is the next layer the first layer of approach which target attacker needs to pass through is the security policy security policy is the first layer which is protecting everything 
when the policy is properly placed and appropriately the controls are set i would not say that it will stop the attack it will slow down the attack when the user education and application updates are done again it will slow down the attack or sometimes the possibility of blocking the attack is there web security filtering wireless security so layer by layer we'll be defending every segment so every layer an attacker passes through the speed of his breach or uh, the intensity of his uh, attack is slowing down so what are the security controls we have email security that will keep on monitoring your incoming and outgoing emails your data loss prevention or information rights management software to ensure that the data are confidentially safe or it resides inside your network your network firewall to secure your network traffic cyber threat intelligence or platform feed cyber threat intelligence are commonly available with vendors like Verizon Symantec FireEye these are openly available we can subscribe to it and sometimes most of the intelligence are free for most of the customers detection and response advanced threat protection user behavior analytics intrusion prevention detection web application firewall each and every log from every application or every day security device are fed into the security events and incident monitoring application which correlates each and every incident and every log why was the particular incident is related it just analyzes how could this log be compared or correlated or what is the dependency of the log with this we can identify what are the relations between the logs from various sources on a particular instant or even essential practices cyber defense in depth what are the things we need to do the risk awareness culture building up i mean educating the user building up the awareness the proper access control management and also securing your cloud creating maintaining your up to date inventory asset inventory is the main key you need to know your assets and also the configuration so be vigilant to the threat intelligence and external both internal and focus on uh, security by design even from the any design any network or any new infrastructure design start including a uh, security as a best practices on all the things not only the cost factor the performance factor the implementation factor how reliable or how usable it is security has, has to be a uh, contributing a major factor in it think about the security and uh, add other attributes to your infrastructure and also your business process as well security framework there are a lot of security frameworks available and as we already know that the, we will be uh, discussing on NAST NIST cyber security framework which is uh, guidelines provided by the security leader so once it's fit we have the option of making it SAM to live monitor it can traffic or live monitoring a particular folder or gather information periodically we can configure as ever we can characteristic it's measurable cost balance technology agnostic flexible and repeatable and common linguistic so it should be common to understood by every business and adaptable to every business and it can be measured how much we can implement how much we can neglect it can also help us to balance the cost involved in the implementing security in the infrastructure and also technology wise we can implement in which technology which concept or which control we can use it's flexible for any type of environment and it's repeatable so this is the objective of a cyber security framework which is prescribed by NIST so what happens initially describe the current security posture where the security of your enterprise or environment currently is in and you need to identify what is the target security procedure so if you understand where you stand you need to decide where you move so the improvement has to be identified the difference between the current state and the next state should be identified and the improvement has to be continuous once we move repeat the process of target and assess the target posture if there is any risk communicate again it's a cyclable process it is repeating whenever we complete a single phase it goes to the next phase in the clock it's a repeating circle some of the other frameworks high trust which uh, takes care of health insurance and information related to the health sector hipaa is also one of the uh, thing pci dss which specifically talks about the digital transaction and digital cash cards uh, debit card credit card etc iso has multiple uh, standards 27000 which is on generic requirements on security requirements what is needed for the organization and iso 27002 is on implementing the required controls on the environment security system controls nist frameworks on the other hand so these are the frameworks which will provide you the guidelines on how to secure your data and your infrastructure so these are the key elements of cyber security program considering business priorities assets and processes document formal cyber security strategy and uh, create a goal and objective on it define formal framework or risk management controls if you are not formally able to follow it there are risk management controls already available freely 
can implement readily available security frameworks from it evaluate what is your current strategy and where you are up to building a plan and to understand actually you need to monitor and repeat the process again and again to make the improvements the improvement from 0 to 100 will not be achieved on a single cycle it might take 100 cycles or 200 cycles and the fraction of improvement should be always constant so nist cyber security framework has component so identify protect detect respond and recover these are the five steps which are prescribed it in the identification phase you need to identify the assets in your management your business environment what is your current risk assessment happened and what is your current risk management strategy so these are the thing identification phase you need to identify your existing state the protection so only after identification you can protect your computers or provide access control provide training data security fraud technology anything the protection phase comes again comes next and third thing will be detection if there is any abnormality anomalies there is any threat the detection phase so once it detect the phase 4 will talk about how you respond what is the response plan how to communicate how soon the communication has to be sent to the right team or if it's a major risk whether it has to be communicated or cascaded to the stakeholders or it can be handled internally or externally so every plans and uh, everything will be handled on the recovery phase will talk on the bcp or disaster recovery or uh, how do we improvise the existing plan thank you